our host, Writer and Arab Stephen Harper, Prime Minister of Canada, Majesty Queen Rania of Jordan, Highness the Aga Khan, friends and members of this noble fraternity working hard to save the lives of innocent mothers and children. Excellencies, once again, allow me to, to commend Prime Minister Harper for conceiving the idea of, conce of convening this important summit on maternal, newborn, and child health. I congratulate him also for the wonderful organization. Prime Minister Harper has this demonstrated exemplary leadership on this all-important matter from Muskoka to the UN Commission on Information and Accountability for Women's and Children's Health. Through several initiatives to this summit today. We sincerely appreciate the good work you are doing. Mr. So Prime Minister, I'm sure I speak on behalf of many people on this planet when I say keep up the good work. Excellencies, I'm delighted to join you this morning at this important session on doing more together globally. I subscribe to the idea that doing more together is the best way to go. Our past and recent experience in addressing issues of women's and children's health have not suggested otherwise. It's imperative that we build upon this experience of working together as we count down to our 2015 MDGs deadline and for post-2015 phase that is dawning. Your Majesty, Highness, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Tanzania's experience in implementing MDG 4 and 5 has taught us many lessons as we travel towards the 2015 deadline and chart the path towards post-2015 agenda, development agenda. I say so because the, the results tell the story about the successes made or can be made and the challenges that deserve continued attention going forward. As we examine this experience, it is important to note that Tanzania was worse off before the proclamation of the MDGs than what we, or where we are today. At the dawn of the new millennium, maternal mortality rate was 870 for every 100,000 live births. Infant mortality was 115 for every 1,000 live birth. Under 5 mortality was 191 for every 1,000 live birth. The coverage of contraceptives was 7% only, and 43% of women gave birth under the care of skilled health personnel. When the MDG 4 and 5 targets were announced, to us it appeared to be two ambitious goals to attain. But we said we have to rise to the challenge. We were supposed to lower maternal mortality to 193 for every 100,000 life births. As I said, it was 870. We're supposed to, to bring down neonatal mortality to 19 deaths for every 1,000 live births, and under 5 mortality to 54 for every 1,000 live births from 191 by 2015. 
today less than 600 days to a start deadline. Tanzania's maternal mortality rate has come down to 454 from 870, a 45% decline. Neonatal has come down to 26 from 119. Under five, mortality has come down to 54. The use of contraceptives has increased to 27% with 25% unmet needs. And women who give birth to health at health facilities under the care of skilled midwives or health professionals is now at 51%. Indeed, in the span of 14 years, comparatively a lot of ground has been covered and much more has been achieved. Tanzania has met the MDG target for under five mortality, reducing it by two thirds. <laughs> we are very close to meeting the neonatal mortality rate, which I'm sure by next year we should be able to overcome that. But we are far from meet meeting the target with regard to maternal mortality. As I said, we have done 45%, we are supposed to do 75%. We are also far behind with regards to the provision of skilled health professionals. It is clear from these statistics that we have made progress, <clears throat> but not good enough with regards to maternal mortality. But work is still in progress to accelerate the pace. As alluded to earlier, I'm hopeful. We'll cover a lot of ground by 2015. These hard-worn results have been achieved through a number of interventions undertaken through concerted efforts by our government respective families and communities, but also through the support from our development partners, including bilaterals, the multilaterals, private sector, private foundations, and the other, and the, and the wider civil society organizations. When I got into office, when I came into office in 2005, I made a promise to make healthcare one of the top priority item, gender items of my administration. We immediately undertook a review of the health situation in the country and they came up with a new health policy. But we also designed the primary health services development program to implement the policy. Subsequently also, on a number of specific, we came up with specific policy instruments to deal with specific challenges in the health sector. With regards to maternal, newborn and child mortality or child health issues, we came up with a roadmap to accelerate the reduction of maternal, newborn and child death we came up with an immunization costed plan, a family planning costed plan, human resource and health strategic plan, and now we have what we call the sharpened plan. These policy and programs were aimed at addressing access to health care and service delivery capacity related bottlenecks. We gave ourselves the overarching ambition, first and foremost, to work hard to improve access to health care by building delivery, health delivery facilities within a radius of five kilometers from where people live. Also, we agreed to provide these facilities 
with the requisite equipment, medicines, as well as skilled health personnel. To implement these ambitious plans and programs, the government raised the health budget fivefold from 271 tons billion tons and shillings, which is equivalent to 170 million US dollars in 2007 to 1.4 trillion, which is equivalent close to 900 million dollars in 2013. We moved it from six to the third birth after education and infrastructure development. This investment has paid, is beginning to pay dividends. Working with the communities, 1,640 new dispensaries have been built, 122 new health centers, and 19 new hospitals have been built. There has been considerable improvement with the district, regional, and zonal hospitals, as well as the Muhimbidi National Hospital to take care of referral cases. Since 2007, we have upgraded in many, we have upgraded many of, of the old dispensaries in the rural areas to enable them to undertake birth-related surgeries. With health centers, we are building capacity to do cesarean section. We have expanded training and employment of health, health professionals. We have improved the availability of medical equipment, medicines, including vaccines. Besides addressing accessibility, the accessibility challenges, but we also undertook specific measures which have, have, which have helped to reduce maternal, newborn, and child mortality. With regard to child mortality, among the specific interventions that we have made, one is sustenance high immunization coverage. It is now over 93%. Improved malaria control. Increased coverage of integrated management of childhood illnesses. The coverage of, of uh, improved nutrition, including coverage of vitamin A, which is now over 90% for children under five. But also, there's a lot of improvement now with regards to breastfeeding. With neonats, besides the above measures, which also have helped with reduced neonatal mortality, but we have also taken specific measures to improve on our capacity to deal with asphyxia, pregnancy and birth-related complications because these are also major causes of death among, 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 among newborns. Take care of infectious, infectious diseases, but also deal with those who are born prematurely. With regards to mothers, measures include improved perinatal care, visitations to clinics, is over 96%. Our biggest problem is giving birth. Only 51% give birth in bona fide health delivery facilities. But the factor here is distance. If the dispensary or the health center is 20 kilometers away, during pregnancy, at least at early, during early pregnancy, a mother can walk or be taken by bicycle. But when in labor, that's not possible. So many of them give birth at home under the care of traditional birth attendants who don't have the skills when the pregnancy is complicated or there are complications related to pregnancy, overbleeding, and so on. Of course, we also have increased coverage 
of intermittent preventive treatment for malaria, anemia, etc. We have made it, of course, through persuasion that every pregnant woman gets tested for HIV needs when visiting the clinics so that those who are detected with a problem in good time, they are themselves managed, but also we have a very, a very robust program which we launched two years ago, or three years ago, which I launched two years ago with three years with the support of Global Fund for prevention of mother to child transmission. Improved access to care under skilled personnel has also helped. As I said, we have not yet succeeded in that one, but the little that we have, we have done has contributed to the reduction in maternal mortality. So what is required of us now is scaling up on these interventions. They have worked well. They produce results. If we do more, we'll definitely get better results in future. I commit myself to continue to increase the government budget for health care. We, we also believe with continued support from partners and friends like the bilaterals, like the government of Canada and the other many governments in the developed world that are helping us. The support of the United Nations and UN agencies, WHO, I see Margaret is here, UNICEF and other agencies of the UN with the support of Global Fund in the fight against malaria, HIV, AIDS, and tuberculosis. Malaria is a major killer of women and children. Successes in controlling malaria immediately translates into more lives saved. Death from malaria among children has been cut to over 50, 60% in Tanzania because of measures of malaria control, insecticide-treated bed nets, the use of artemisinin in combination therapy, indoor residual spraying. We are now working on larvicide, killing mosquitoes at their birthplaces. These interventions have translated, has helped so much reducing the death of mothers and children. So working with Global Fund and other partners, this fight is... But private foundations, the Aga Khan Foundation, His Highness is here, they're doing a lot, training nurses, the university in Dar es Salaam. <laughs> other comprehensive programs, on improved health care, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has been phenomenal in supporting our endeavors. In fact, one of those major, major supporters of our programs and a lot of the success that we are talking here in terms of reduction in maternal, newborn, and child health has very much been contributed by what the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has done and supported us. We have other, 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 other many players from the NGO community. Yesterday I had a meeting of the MNH fraternity here where the Prime Minister was meeting with them. I was surprised, I was presently surprised to know how many of them are quite active in Tanzania. To you all, I thank you for your support. It has made a huge difference. So I believe continued, continued cooperation and support, we should be able to do more and we should be able to achieve more. 
In conclusion, let me say that I have shared with you our experience and our optimism for the days ahead of us. We've come a long way as far as maternal, newborn, and child health is concerned. What is clear is that the issue we are, or the, the problem we are confronting is not about knowing what needs to be done, no lack of interest to do that. It is rather a function of capacity constraints on our side, which is very much associated with the level of development that we are in. Our experiences uh, give us no reason to renege on the commitment and on the, on the, on the cause. I'm personally committed to see acceleration in the interventions as well as more accountability and better results so that we can get better results with regards to women's and children's health delivery by 2015 and beyond. Recently, we introduced a scorecard for every district to know exactly where they are on the various aspects with regards to maternal, newborn, and child health. Two weeks ago, I had the opportunity of distributing them in person to the regional governors. I said, look at this scorecard. This is how, how good or how bad you are performing on the various indicators. Im consolidate the gains. Improve on the green, so that, on, on the yellow, so that it also becomes green. But do more on the red so that you move from red to yellow. If you can move from red to green, that is even better. So everybody took it. The, the, some of them tried, were, were wishing they, they could hide their faces because they are scorecards. So this, this is the best way to me in terms of information and accountability. They wanted the reports to be, to be given to me every six months. I said six months is too long. Let's meet in three months, because I leave office in October next year. <laughs> so if it has got to be six months, I'm only going to do it twice once. <laughs> but I won't do it a few times, so that at least people are used to, 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 to this system of accountability. So I believe we have demonstrated how far we have gone with little, with little resources and with the support that we are getting from our friends. We are certain that with improved health systems, more resources and accountability, we will be able to achieve our objectives. Fortunately, this world has enough resources. This world has plenty of wealth. This world has the knowledge, has the technology, but also there are plenty of people of goodwill. If the world works together in this noble cause, our objective will be realized in no time, saving women and children. Live their life to the fullest. Save them from dying from causes which can be prevented should remain our shared responsibility. This fight we must win, and win comprehensively. Losing is not an option. Thank you for your kind attention.